Guys, if you caught my recent Black Friday fragrance haul video, you know that I bought several fragrances from the house of Parfum de Empire. This is a brand that I really wanted to dig in for the longest time. And even though ZGO Perfumery has had the brand for a good three to four years now, I'm finally digging into it. Now, I've been a fan of one of their fragrances for the longest time. In fact, I have a huge, huge bottle from the brand that I bought way back in around 2015. It's a Parfum the Empire's Ombre Russe, which comes in a bottle, a box like this, I should say. And then inside this box is this most beautiful bottle of Ombre Russe here, I'll show you. So this is the original formulation of Ombre Russe, and I've spoken about this one quite a bit. It's an amber, a Russian amber, I guess it would translate to. It's a fizzy and a vodka-ish with spices and some warmth to it with uh, cinnamon and things like that. And there's a little bit of uh, incense running throughout it. So that has been my favorite fragrance from this house. And you're gonna find out today in this top seven video of Parfum the Empire Fragrances if Ombre Russe is still my number one favorite fragrance from this house. So if you're curious to learn about Parfum the Empire, then this is the video for you. Stay tuned to find out all about my top seven Parfum the Empire fragrances. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yeah, today we're talking about Parfum de Empire. The fragrances are all created by Marc Antoine Corticchiato. If you recall, I spoke about his fragrances, or actually him as a perfumer, for JCB fragrances recently. Uh, if you've been paying close attention, you will realize his name. He's definitely a favorite perfumer of mine, and Parfum de Empire is a very, very underrated house. Uh, if you like really great, niche fragrances that are unique and not ne necessarily like similar to a lot of other fragrances whereas a niche brand will copy other brands best fragrances and create kind of clonish fragrances but these are all kind of very original takes on fragrances definitely definitely check out this house really a wonderful house i'm going to dig into this house even further because one afternoon i went to zgo perfumery and i smelled the entire collection there Back in September, I also smelled the entire collection at uh, Javoy Paris as well. So there's a lot of fragrances here that are great. They go in multiple directions, and I'm gonna tell you about the top seven. Also in this video, I am going to report to you about the latest fragrance from Parfum de Empire. It's called Vetiver Bourbon, brand spanking new, new. You'll find out all about it. But if you're curious to discover the brand, they are sold at ZGO Perfumery. I have them linked in the info box. The fragrances are 50 ml at ZGO. They come in 100 ml, but I don't think ZGO carries 100 ml sizes. And the prices vary from 50 ml to as low as 115 to 50 ml to as high as 175. There is a discount code for me that the ZGO has, ZGO has created. It's the perfume guy and that saves you 15% off. So why don't we go ahead and talk about Vetiver Bourbon first and then I'll put the fragrances in order. This is a 50 ml bottle for 150. It's Eau de Parfum concentration. All the fragrances are Eau de Parfum concentration. This features notes of Vetiver, Bourbon, Angelica, Cloves, Iris, and Brett Seeds. So the thing about this particular house is you'll notice some notes that not typically are used a lot or uh, used frequently in other fragrances. So he, uh, the perfumer Marc Antoine Corticchiato does like to use some um, not necessarily very popular ingredients. Like in this case, this is a vetiver with Angelica and there's a major uh, vegetal component to this fragrance. Angelica in the end has a vegetal quality but also is very powdery. So imagine something vegetal smelling and uh, powdery at the same time. And also musky because Angelica has muskiness. But for me, this particular vetiver fragrance it's very rooty, like it's really deep. Like you, when you wear the fragrance, you experience how deep this root has gone. It's very, very earthy, and it's got this kind of dampness covering around it, humidity, but like a cold, humid um, uh, touch to it, rather than like really warm, if that makes sense. So if you like that idea, this is one that you should try. But again, it's got very, very uh, vetiver forward styling here. So if you are into vetiver, you're definitely gonna enjoy this. But as I said, very earthy, lots of woods, a bit grassy, a little bit aromatic, but you do have powdery touches. And I feel like Angelica and Iris, as I said, Angelica has powdery touches, a little vegetal. Iris also has uh, vegetal touches, it's powdery as well. 
but they definitely have a different experience when you're wearing them. Iris can get buttery, a bit more textural, whereas Angelica is a bit more transparent, kind of uh, airy, uh, vegetal touch. So you have that uh, presence here in this particular uh, fragrance. Warmth from the cloves. There's definitely the warmth from the cloves, but the cloves are not overwhelming here. So this doesn't smell like Christmas. At least to me it doesn't, because I always associate cloves with Christmas, the smell of spices at Christmas. And then finally there's ambrette seeds here, which which is very, very musky. So it's a musky fragrance in the end. It's very, very deep. It's very, very earthy. It's rooty, as I said. So it's, it's basically, I feel like, uh, he's done a pay, you know he's paying tribute to the uh, bourbon vetiver in this case and uh, or vetiver bourbon and uh, what he's done is really really uh, an amazing uh, tribute to that particular note if you love vetiver very very earthy this is very very masculine leaning as well uh, that vetiver root or vetiver bourbon or vetiver note in general uh, for me is a very masculine note unlike some let's say not an um, a good comparison, but for me, uh, vetiver versus tuberose. Tuberose leans feminine, in this case, vetiver for me totally leans a masculine. So, uh, this is Vetiver Bourbon, the latest release from the House of Parfum, the Empire, and uh, I'll let you know where it ends up on the list. So, the one thing I forgot to mention is that Marc Antoine Corticchiato is from the island of Corsica, or Cors, and he has a collection called. La Heritage Course, and there's three fragrances from this collection in this uh, list of video, the, a video list that I'm doing for you. The first one I'm going to talk to you about at number seven is Malame, this one right here. Very unique green fragrance, and this one, obviously, it's a green label. And the collection uh, course uh, fragrances, or collection La Heritage Course uh, fragrances, all have this kind of design work on the bottles, uh, in addition to the labels. The, uh, the non, um, uh, what do you call it, Reg the regular bottles from the collection do not have that uh, drawing or that um, sketch work that they have on here. But Malame is a tribute to Corsican shrubs and, you know, greenery growing in the island. And this is the first time apparently they're using a note called Inula. It's a yellow flowering plant and there's thistles, nettles, brambles, and roots in this particular fragrance. For me, it's one of the most unique fragrances and I bought this last year at the height of the pandemic at ZGO because I felt like it was a very very unique fragrance and I really do enjoy green fragrances, aromatic fragrances, fragrances that smell like weeds and uh, earthy kind of plants and things like that because I grew up with my dad who planted a lot of stuff and he always liked to cultivate and uh, grow plants and you know you know uh, cultivate them as I said and then do the new earth and then plant more things. For me this reminds me of all the vegetation that he used to grow. Kind of has uh, aromatic touches and kind of herbal touches but for me they're more like woody leafy herbs rather than like actual herbs if that makes sense. So there's aromatic touches for sure, lots of greenness in the sense that it's aromatic and green, very herbal but also earthy woody touches. And then I think it also gets powdery musky as well. So very, very, very unique fragrance. In fact, for me, thistles are thorny, right? I get a thorny feel when I'm wearing this one. It does have that kind of prickly kind of thorny touch when you're wearing it because you really do experience the actual weeds and thistles and nettles and brambles and roots and things like that. Very unique fragrance. It's an acquired taste, I have to be honest, but I think he's done a great job, really, really wonderful job creating such a very unique smelling green fragrance where it's never smelled a fragrance like this before. And I don't know if it's because the inula that's in here, the yellow flowering plant that uh, they've written down that's in here, but very unique green fragrance. So Malame is number seven. So at number six, I'm going with Immortel Course. Once again, another fragrance inspired by our and to me, I guess it's uh, dedicated or inspired by the island of Corsica because it's known for Immortel, the everlasting flower that grows there. And this is a fragrance dedicated to the everlasting flower. So Immortel Course is 50 ml for 175. Malame, on the other hand, is 50 ml for 115. So the prices are definitely different uh, that uh, I guess the depending on the types of ingredients they're using, that's what goes into pricing the fragrance. But this is all about Immortel with apricots. There's saffron here, there's oak moss and lemons. For me, it's very grassy, very earthy, and also very, very herbal. You can totally experience autumn in this particular fragrance because there's definitely an autumn vibe. And whenever I see Immortel, it's that everlasting flower. It's kind of a dry flower, kind of um, grassy, but dry grass, maybe hay-like. 
So those all come into play with this particular uh, note, Immortelle. But you know, you've got the sweetness and fruitiness from the apricots in here, some definitely leathery touches, of course, and you know, some bright, um, some bright uh, lemoniness in here as well to kind of give it a bit of a sunshiny effect to the fragrance. So in, the, in this case, it does get spicy, it does get a bit boozy, and I feel like with the Immortelle note, you have these kind of qualities, but for me, there's also a caramelly touch with Immortelle as well, depending on how it's used. But yeah, it's a wonderful fragrance. It's uh, lower on the list because Again, Immortelle, and the, just like the last fragrance, is kind of an acquired taste. This is definitely a unique fragrance in that it has these autumn vibes, but also all these qualities like spicy, boozy, very woody, fruity, sweet, and uh, yeah, there's some moss in here too, M mossiness, but of course, earthy, warm, and um, herbal, and um, leather comes in here as well. So that is Immortelle Course. I featured that in an Immortelle Fragrances video. If you're curious to learn more about Immortelle and the Everlasting Flower, please go catch that video so you can find out more about the fragrances in that particular note. And at number five, it is Vetiver Bourbon. I've put Vetiver Bourbon here. Vetiver can be a bit boring to me, and I always say woody fragrances can be, get boring. I like fragrances to have kind of a balancing act with notes so that you experience the different notes together kind of equally. In this case, for me, I felt like the vetiver is overwhelming and very, very strong. And you know, it's not a bad fragrance, it's just I felt like it's an overdose of vetiver. And I wanted a little more excitement, and even though they have cloves, the iris, the angelica, and the ambrette seeds, the vetiver bourbon kind of dominates. But still, it's at number five, uh, still very wearable vetiver, very, very deep, very, very, um, you know, uh, rooty, and also the idea of humid uh, comes to mind uh, as well. So vetiver bourbon is uh, number five. And then the rest of the list is really, really exciting. I mean, we're going with uh, Musk Tonkin at number four. This is a dirty, dirty little fragrance, but so, so delicious, really, really wonderful. So I was reading up on the website for Parfum de Empire, and from right at, what I read, this is one of the notes that a lot of perfumers wish they could use, the Musk Tonkin from the deer, the Musk deer, but they can't use it anymore. In this case, they've recreated the smell with other ingredients. And they're not really publishing a lot of notes uh, for this because it's a, it's because so you can interpret the fragrance the way you want it, you know, interpret it with what you're smelling. But they do mention honey, they do mention musk and amber. But for me, I also get a major, major jasmine touch. And I feel like I'm getting the indolic qualities in here, the animalic qualities from the indolic jasmine note. But there's definitely sweetness here. Uh, there's definitely lots of sweetness. Really, really musky. Like literally, it's like animalic deer musk for sure. But that's the reason why I bought this because it's one that I kept coming back to over and over again. And on my, on my initial smell, way back when this first had come out, like maybe six years ago, seven years ago, I felt it was a little too animalic back then, but I really like the way this smells now. It's fantastic and uh, just really, really delicious uh, animalic musk fragrance. Definitely really love it. It's got the sweetness and it's got these honey touches for sure. And powdery, of course, musky fragrances do go powdery all the time. It's very, very musky. And as I said, I get jasmine touches here. I feel like there's endolic jasmine in here, which is creating or contributing to the animalicness of this particular fragrance. It's so good, guys. Musk Tonkin, do check it out. It's really, really good if you like animalic fragrances. This is, to I mean, it's a bearable for me, and I'm not the biggest fan of animalic fragrances, especially if it's over the top animalic. But some of you that are not into it are not not gonna like that fragrance. I'm just being honest right now, but I love it. In fact, I should also say I'm actually digging Musk Tonkin a lot more than Serge Lutens Musk Kubla Khan now. Man, there's something really good about that. And I think it's the sweetness in there, the honeyed effect. Uh, it's contributing to something, I don't wanna say the word gourmand, but something in that kind of uh, feel or effect to the fragrance. So moving on to the third and final La Heritage Corsica or Corse fragrance that I have in the video. Here it's a Corsica Furiosa with an amazing name. I absolutely love this name. Uh, and the, the fragrance smells fantastic, guys. It is a really, really delicious fragrance. Now, this is also one of the less expensive fragrances. This is 50 ml for 115. Again, it's a 50 ml, not 100 ml, but still, this is a good, 
price for niche fragrances. And this one I've been a fan of ever since I smelled it for the first time. It was just a love at first sniff. It has this kind of uh, very green vibe, but very, very different than Malame. So different, so, so different. For me, this one features a note of Olve, I think is how you say it. It's a liqueur that I guess, from what I read on uh, the Parfum the Empire website, is that they, uh, in Corsica, apparently everybody makes their own version of Eau de Vie or Eau de Vie. Uh, and so that they feature this. It's a fruit brandy, but it also has notes of tomato leaf, oak moss, lentiscus, which is mastic resin, and wild mint. So this is a very, 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 very tomato leafy and also very, very aromatic and herbal. But you have these um, qualities of um, this particular note, uh, lentiscus, which is... Um, uh, this is uh, the mastic resin and you have all these different qualities three different types of uh, Extractions apparently were done for this particular fragrance and you go from peppery fruity aromatic earthy and mushroomy And then you go to hay blonde tobacco honey straw licorice and then finally resins Spices and leather all from the different extraction processes that are available for lentiscus Which is here and according to the uh, write-up for this particular fragrance you experience all of those here in this particular fragrance sure it's very very spicy but uh, it has a kind of a resinous touch but more I should say pure rather than like something sweet and resinous if that makes sense something a little more refined in this case the mastic resin that's in here now I've, I've used mastic resin in the Middle East there's a gum made with mastic and it's very very interesting to chew on this particular it's, it's an edible resin so uh, it's kind of prized it's used in cooking uh, in the Middle East, so they used it here in this particular fragrance. And what I love about this one, it's the tomato leaf, man. It is such a great note. I love tomato leaf in fragrances. This one kind of has that kind of salad-like feel to it uh, because of the tomato leaf and the mint in here, but it is really, really great. It's fresh, very, very fresh for summertime, and if you're looking for something completely different than a citrus or something maybe perhaps utilizing lavender and geranium, tomato leaf is your next uh, greatest uh, note. It's bitter, but it's green and really delicious. So Corsica Furiosa at number three it definitely deserves that spot. Okay guys, it's getting really, really good. This is another one that I've really wanted to get from this house for the longest time. I finally have it. This is Le Cri de la Lumiere, this one right here. Uh, this is an iris lover's dream come true. Man, if you love iris, you got to get your nose on this one. It is super fantastic. So once again, with this particular fragrance, we've got ambrette seeds, just like in the previous fragrance. And then once again, with this particular fragrance, just like the last fragrance, we have eau de vie. So it's that liqueur, the fruit, the fruit brandy kind of a... Uh, liqueur that's in here but I think this is mostly known for Florentine iris and then of course there's Turkish rose in here as well and for me I also feel like there's patchouli in here that I'm it's not credited because when I wear it man it's got a great trail it's a powdery trail with a bit of rosiness with it's got this kind of like free, uh, fruitiness in here but the fruitiness is not just coming from the eau de vie. I feel like I'm getting it from the ambrette seeds as well. And fruity, a bit boozy, all coming from the ambrette. Man, I love ambrette and fragrances. So this is very, very musky and powdery and so, so delicious. It's a different kind of iris fragrance for me. Uh, and it smells luxurious, like pure... Uh, purely refined, whatever they've given you is just like the best of the best in the way it smells. And man, it is so good. Really, really delicious smelling. It's just, I'm getting that kind of patchouli touch in here and I don't know where it's coming from. Like it's got this earthy woodiness, but also very sparkling. There's a bit of fizziness in here as well. And I just love, just love the way it's blended. It's perfection. And with this one, I feel like with the fact that I get this patchouli touch, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting like a trail with this one that uh, is very, very sexy. Anyway, Le Cri de la Lumiere is number two and such a great fragrance, guys. Really, really delicious. And you guessed it, at number one, it is Ombre Russe. I still really love this particular fragrance even after I discovered it like 10 years ago. It is a really great amber fragrance. It's not one of those very choking kind of ambers, not very heavy and dense. It has some brightness to it. And I feel like the champagne note in here gives you that kind of sparkling, fizzy brightness that are not necessarily 
heavily present in other amber fragrances. So because of this particular reason, we have some lightness. It's just airier. So it features notes of ambergris with champagne. There's vodka, there's Russian tea, cinnamon, coriander, birch, juniper, leather, incense, and musk. A lot of stuff going on and it is inspired by Russia. And you've got the champagne to have with the caviar. You've got the vodka there that uh, is from Russia. Then you've got the tea because there's definitely a tea presence and then lots of warmth with the cinnamon. You need that warmth when it's really, really cold and snowy out there. But you know, you do experience a little bit of incense running throughout it. Not a lot. I don't get a lot of incense. It's just a light, right amount of smoky incense that's running throughout it. And of course, leather and musk. One other thing I should say, I also get a fruitiness in here. Like there's a dried fruity presence in here that I don't think is credited, which I really seem to love. I really love it. So this is all I have left from my 500 ml bottle. As you can see, I've used up quite a bit. It's so good, guys. If you guys don't know this one, do check it out. I don't know if there's much difference between the older label and the new labels, because the new labels do seem a little different. But either way, my number one favorite fragrance from Parfum the Empire is Ombre Rouge. It's such a fantastic amber. Anyway, guys, that's all I have for you today. A house overview on Parfum the Empire, a top seven list is what I should say. These are some of the best fragrances. In fact, as I said, I did sample all these fragrances at Javoy in September, not yeah, September. And then I just sampled these a few weeks ago around Black Friday at, uh, at uh, ZGO Perfumery. And that's where I bought these fragrances. And they do offer a discount code. As I said, I have the discount code in the info box, you can go catch that um, and see what you like from the brand. They have more fragrances, a ton of them, and I'm going to be digging into the house a lot more. But if you're a fan of the house, do let me know. Put a comment down below so I can find out. And if any of them sound great to you, also let me know that as well, because I want to know what you guys uh, like and would be interested in checking out and things like that. But either way, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.